Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another episode of Wacky Wednesday, a weekly series where we explore wacky deck ideas in both standard and modern, and this week we're covering Etherworks Marvel in modern, and in fact a total of 12 cards in this deck are currently banned in standard, but legal in modern. So how does Etherworks Marvel work? Well it's a combo deck built around the 4 mana legendary artifact that says whenever a permanent you control is put into a graveyard you get 1 energy, so works very nicely with fetch lands and the like, and at any point you can tap the marvel and pay 6 energy to take a look at the top 6 cards of your library and then cast one of those cards for free, so a very powerful effect that used to be combined with Ulamog the Ceaseless Hunger back in standard, but now in modern we have access to Amrakul the Aeon Storm, which is much more powerful, so we get a 15-15 that cannot be countered with flying, protection from colored spells and annihilator 6, and when we cast Emrakul the Aeon Storm, we get to take an extra turn after this one, and if you read Etherworks Marvel carefully we actually get to cast the card for free, so if we do find an Emrakul the Aeon Storm among the top 6 cards we will get to take an extra turn and most likely also be able to attack with our Emrakul to annihilate our opponents. So that's the main game plan of the deck, then the plan B of the deck is to use Through the Breach in combination with Emrakul to still annihilate our opponents, so by using Through the Breach we can put an Emrakul from our hand into play, give it haste and then sacrifice it at the end of turn, so we do get one attack with the Annihilator 6 from Emrakul, but at the end of our turn we do have to sacrifice the Emrakul, so the Emrakul doesn't stick around like it does when we hit it off a Marvel, but it does still get to attack and annihilate our opponent for 6, which is usually enough to close out the game or cripple the opponent enough for us to close out the game some other way. So that's the basic premise of the deck, now let's take a look at the entire list, starting out with our 1-drops, where we have 4 copies of Serum Visions to smooth out our draws and find our different combo pieces. Then we have 4 copies of Ancient Stirrings, which lets us take a look at the top 5 cards of our library, reveal a colorless card and put it into our hand. So the main purpose of Ancient Stirrings is to find Aetherworks Marvel, but we can also find Woodweaver's Puzzle Knots, which we'll get to in a second, or even get our Amrakul if we already have a Through the Breach in our hand, and the fail case is to get a land since lands are colorless, so we're very unlikely to not find anything with the Ancient Stirrings. Then we get to our first energy card, which is a tune with Aether, which lets us search our library for a basic land and put it into our hand, and then we get 2 energy, so this can help us fix our mana and gain 2 energy, which is important if we want to get up to 6 energy on turn 4 for the Marvel. Then a very important energy producer in the deck is Woodweaver's Puzzle Knot, which for 2 mana enters a battlefield and gains us 3 life and 3 energy, and then we can pay 2 and a green to sacrifice a Puzzle Knot to do that once again, and important to note that if we have an Aetherworks Marvel in play, this says whenever a permanent we control goes into a graveyard we gain an energy, so if we sacrifice a Woodweaver's Puzzle Knot we get 4 energy instead of just 3 if we have a Marvel in play. Then we get to our energy producing creatures, we have 4 copies of Servant of the Conduit, which is a 2 mana 2-2, two -two that when she enters battlefield also gains us 2 energy, and we can use the Servant as a mana dork at the cost of 1 energy, so it can help us cast or Marvel ahead of schedule, or maybe ramp us into a Through the Breach. Then we have two copies of Whirler Virtuoso as a 3 mana 2-3 that gains us 3 energy when he enters the battlefield, and is also an alternate way for us to spend our energy, since we can pay 3 energy to make a 1-1 flying Thopter token, so that's a nice way to spend our energy if we don't have a Marvel, or perhaps if our opponent has a hate card in play that prevents us from using the Marvel. And then we have 4 copies of Rogue Refiner as a 3 mana 3-2 three that gains us 2 energy and draws us a card when he enters the battlefield, so helps us dig deeper into our deck to find our different combo pieces, and also gains us energy which is very important for us to use the Marvel. Then of course we're playing 4 copies of Aetherworks Marvel, which is the centerpiece of the deck, and important to note is that if you play a Marvel with one in play already, since they are legendary, one of them has to go to the graveyard, but that will net you 2 energy since they both see a Marvel go to the graveyard, and even if you miss on hitting an Emrakul on your first spin with the Marvel, there's so many other energy sources that you can hit that will keep fueling your future Marvel spins that you're very likely to find an Emrakul sooner or later. And if you do happen to find a Through the Breach with your Aetherworks Marvel spin and have an Emrakul in hand, you can simply cast a Through the Breach with the Aetherworks Marvel and then put the Emrakul from your hand into play, give it haste and most likely win the game. And then of course we have our 4 copies of Emrakul, which is a card we most want to see with our Aetherworks Marvel spins, since they give us an extra turn and most likely just win the game on the spot. 
Then our mana base is pretty straightforward, we're a team or colored deck, and we're also playing 4 copies of Aether Hub, which gains us an energy when it enters the battlefield, and we can spend that energy to make 1 mana of any color, otherwise the Aether Hub only makes colorless mana. Then we have a total of 8 fetch lands, we have 4 copies of Wooded Foothills, and 4 copies of Misty Rainforest, which can go get our 3 different shock lands, we have Stomping Ground, Steam Vents and Breeding Pool. Then we have some basics to get with our Attune with Aether and our fetch lands. We have three forests, one island and one mountain. And then we also have two copies of Botanical Sanctum, since our main colors are blue and green. And this comes into play untapped if it's one of our first three lands. Then quickly going over the sideboard, we have some cheap counter spells, two copies of Dispel to counter instance, and two copies of Negate to counter non-creature spells, mostly for the control matchups. Then we have two copies of Ancient Grudge against artifact based decks. Then we have two copies of Harness Lightning as a removal spell based around the energy mechanic. We have one copy of Kozilek's Return, which is a sweeper effect that we can also find with our Ancient Stirrings, because the Kozilek's Return is colorless thanks to the Void. Then we have two copies of Jason Mind Sculptor as part of a sideboard plan against more mid-range or controlling decks, where the opponent might bring in some hate cards against the Aetherworks Marvel, and Jace can gain us incremental advantage and maybe find the other missing combo pieces. Then we have two copies of Engineered Explosives as a versatile removal spell that can deal with various hate cards like Craft Digger's Cage. We can also find it with Ancient Stirrings since it's colorless, and thanks to our Aether Hub and Servant of the Conduit, we could even Engineered Explosives for 4 or 5 to blow up even larger permanents, so that's also something that could come up. And then two copies of Relic of Progenitus as a Graveyard Hate card that we can also find with our Ancient Stirrings. So that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the play, and this hand is missing a few important pieces. We do have all the energy we need, and a Through the Breach in case we draw an Emrakul, and I guess we even have the Mana Acceleration to go with the Through the Breach. We're missing the Marvel, we're missing the Emrakul, and we're missing perhaps some card selection. But I think this is a keep, just because we have a lot of cards to draw into here that can win us a game. So let's play the Misty Rainforest, say go. And this is probably going to get a breeding pool, since we're not likely to need red anytime soon, and we want to be uh, careful not to waste any energy with the Aether Hub. And a Goblin Guide from our opponent. So our opponent's on a burn deck, it looks like. So I think we'll let the trigger happen, since we don't mind drawing a land here. And we find Forest on top, so that's nice. So our opponent's on a burn deck, and we've got two copies of Woodweaver's Puzzle Knot in our hand. That's uh, going to work out nicely for us, so... Now that we picked up basic forest, I suppose we can get a tapped steam vents and find the ancient stirrings. So I think I'm just gonna run out the servant of the conduit first here, since I don't mind trading that for the goblin guide. And if our opponent uses a removal spell on it, that's also fine. The only concern here is that we want to play around skull crack, preventing us to gain life with the puzzle knot. So that's a reason to play the puzzle knot first but we also don't want to keep taking damage from the guide. So we don't want to see an Eidolon here, since that can represent a lot of damage. We did find another land, so we're getting lucky here, and we'll just trade. So opponent just passes, stuck on one land, that's good news. So here we just want to find a Marvel, and I think Ancient Stirrings gives us the best chance to do so. So I'm just going to lead with the Stirrings here. And we just find a Misty Rainforest instead. And then I suppose we can just run out a Puzzle Knot here. Opponent's not going to be happy about that one. And then next turn we can perhaps Serum Visions. And yep, there's the Eidolon, so that's going to be kind of a problem here if we don't find our Marvel or Thurder Breach soon. I think we do have to play the Serum Visions here. So we'll take a hit from the Eidolon, and yep, there's an Emrakul, so that's perfect. So let's bottom the Misty, top the Emrakul, and then we can sacrifice the Puzzle Knots, I guess right now, to play around Skullcrack. And then next turn we can just through the Breach the Emrakul, which is gonna set back our opponent significantly. Hopefully they just play another spell here, so they take two. And the opponent playing a land here actually benefits us as well. So we can just fetch up a basic. 
we'll get a forest. And then through the breach, put an Amrakul. Move to combat, attack. Annihilate six. Opponent has to sacrifice everything. And if they want to cast a burn spell before we get to hit them, they just die to their own Eidolon. I guess they can float a mana and then cast a spell, but yep, our opponent's just gonna scoop it up, which makes sense. All right, so we're up against burn, so we do want access to our dispels, our negates, and our harnessed lightning, I think, just to deal with Eidolon. Don't think we also need the explosives. Kozilek's return is also a consideration, uh, since it is an answer to the Eidolon, but perhaps we don't need it. Opponent could also be bringing in something like a deflecting palm for Amrakul, so having negate and dispel also helps us there. What don't we want in this matchup? Perhaps we don't want all our servants since they can die to something like a searing blaze. So I could see taking those out. And then perhaps we want to shave some number of cantrips since they're pretty bad against Eidolon. So I can see taking out two copies of serum visions. And yep, that should do it. So we did take out some of our energy producers, which could come back to bite us. But... Uh, this hand seems fine. It's uh, missing some of our energy producers to go with the Marvel, but we also have a negate to uh, maybe buy us some time. And if the opponent brought in destructive revelries, we can perhaps counter those with negate as well. Grim Lava Mancer turn one, and another negate to draw. So let's play the Foothills, which is probably going to go get a Steam Vents or Stomping Ground. Opponent passes, and of turn will fetch. Given that we have more Ancient Stirrings than Serum Visions, I guess we'll take the Stomping Ground. And yep, there's a Stirrings, so I'm fine playing the Stirrings here. And I guess we can represent the spell. Alright, so found lots of Amrakuls and a Misty Rainforest, so let's take the Amrakul to go with the Through the Breach. But that does mean that there's lots of Amrakuls on the bottom of our library, so we're unlikely to find them with the Marvel. So we are pretty much on the Through the Breach plan this game, since we're also missing the energy sources for the Marvel. So our best draw, I guess, would still be something like a Puzzle Knot to gain some life back. Opponent's gonna fetch, so they can use the Lava Mancer end of turn, perhaps. So we're down to 14. Opponent did fetch green, so they could have some revelries in their hand. Opponent down to 13, so Emrakul with Through the Breach would be lethal. So, as long as these negates can maybe counter some burn, we should be able to buy time for Through the Breach, and then we have to hope that our opponent doesn't have a Deflecting Palm to kill us. Another Sanctum, so we have all the lands we need here. And there's a Boris Charm, which we will promptly negate. Our opponent not having many creatures this draw is actually good for us, since we didn't have any removal spells. Another fetch land, opponents perhaps drawing more lands than they want to, but it does at least fuel their Grim Lava Mancer, so they've got that going for them. Alright, we found a Dispel. I think we are not supposed to play the Marvel here since we don't have any energy to go with it. The question is, can we afford to maybe wait with casting through the Breach so we also have Dispel Protection in case they do have the Deflecting Palm, or are we forced to just through the Breach next turn? Lightning Helix, I'm certainly gonna negate. And that's another Lava Master activation, putting us to 11. Hopefully our opponent just taps out so we can get them with Through the Breach. But they know about the Amrakul in our hands, so it's unlikely to happen. Grim Lava Master just attacks for one. Opponent's got three cards in hand, could technically have 10 points of burn if they have multiple Boros Charms, but that's pretty unlikely. And we found another Marvel, so we could afford to wait one turn on the Through the Breach and hope to draw land. If our opponent just has three Lightning Bolts and draws another Bolt, then I guess we still have the Dispel, but then they can Lava Master us to death, perhaps. I think we just go for the Through the Breach here. And if our opponent has the Deflecting Palm, so be it. Had we actually drawn a land here, I would have perhaps been more inclined to wait a turn since then uh, we're guaranteed to be able to dispel next turn, but not having land number 6 means I think it's just a bit too risky to wait. So let's see if they have it, since it doesn't actually target the Amrakul. 
And all right, looks like they didn't have it. So Emrakul with Through the Breach wins the game. Didn't get to see much Aetherworks Marvel action, but at least we got to show how powerful the Puzzle Knots can be against Burn. So on to the next one. All right, we're on a draw and this is a pretty good hand here. We've got all the energy we need to set up this Marvel. And we even have an Emrakul in case we need to go for the Through the Breach plan or just find a Through the Breach with the Marvel. All right, even the forest, perfect. So let's just go ahead and attune right now. Get an island, say go. Opponent with a Temple of Silence, so a black-white deck of some sort. Get to untap, play the Puzzle Knot here. Say go. Keep our fetch land until after we play the Marvel to maybe get an additional point of energy. And a Shred Memory. Opponent can transmute. Let's see what they get. Opponent gets a Torpor Orb. Alright, interesting. So this would shut off most of the abilities on Rogue Refiner, but we would still get to take an extra turn with Emrakul since that's on cast and not on enters a battlefield. So I just want to make sure to run out the Rogue Refiner while we still can. And then next turn we get to spin the wheel with our Aetherworks Marvel. There's a Torpor Orb, and another Temple of Silence. Let's play the Steam Vans untapped. And we want to make sure to use the Marvel right away, since if we find a Through the Breach we can still attack with the Emrakul. So let's spin the wheel. And alright, we just found an Emrakul, I guess that works. Cast Emrakul, take an extra turn, and that should probably do it. So let's go ahead and attack for three. And take our extra turn, run out our fetch, and let's just get in there, annihilate our opponent. And opponent takes 18. All right, so pretty smooth win here for the Marvel. So not sure what we're up against. Black-white combo control of some sort. So what do we want to bring in? We did see Torpor Orb, which maybe means we should think of bringing in Ancient Grudge or Engineered Explosives. Opponent could also have access to some Hand Disruption, which makes Jace pretty appealing, actually. And if they're on this kind of slower control deck, then Jace is also pretty appealing in general. So I could see bringing in Jace, and I could see shaving one copy of Through the Breach, since now we have Jace to maybe find a copy, and after seeing Torpor Orb, perhaps we don't want some number of Virtuosos, and instead we could bring in maybe a catch-all Engineered Explosives. Don't think we want to overboard until we see more from the opponent. Alright, so this hand has a few issues, mainly that uh, we can't cast the Serum Visions and we only have one land. So I think this is a mulligan. And alright, this is much better. And Jace will definitely keep on top. Since we essentially have three lands here, Ancient Stirrings can also help us find a land. And then uh, we have this nice Planeswalker to find us some goodies. So I think we just lead with our Attune. And get an Island. Opponent with a Torpor Orb, so Rogue Refiner is pretty sad here. But we still get to gain energy and life from the Puzzle Knot, so that's good to go. Um, so yeah, let's run out the Puzzle Knot. And Plague Belcher, alright, I see. So opponents using Torpor Orb to their advantage here, getting a nice 5-4 for 3 mana. And there's a Breeding Pool, so Jace will be able to bounce the Plague Belcher if it comes to it. Or we could play the Rogue Refiner right now to have a blocker for next turn. But I kind of like casting Ancient Stirrings here, looking for a Marvel, since we have plenty of energy. Just found some Aether Hubs, which I guess we'll take here. And then we can play out another Puzzle Knot. Say go. Let's see what other creatures with Enter the Battlefield abilities their opponent has in their deck. So we'll take 5 down to 21. Do have kind of a, a life cushion thanks to our Puzzle Knots. And Eater of Days. Alright, so 4 mana, 9, 8, Flying Trample. 
with no drawback. That's pretty powerful. So things are looking kind of rough here, since if we Jace to bounce the Eater of Days, our opponent just kills a Jace with Plague Belcher, so we haven't accomplished a whole lot. So I think our best bet here is to fetch first, get another basic to preserve our life total, and we have Ether Hub to make red mana. And then we can Serum Visions and drew another Puzzle Knots, Emrakul and Ether Hub. Don't think we want either of those, we're really looking for our Marvel. And then we'll play the Rogue Refiner, which unfortunately doesn't draw us any cards because of Torpor Orb. And I guess it doesn't even block the Plague Belcher because it has Menace and this thing has Flying and Trample, so it really didn't accomplish a whole lot. So we're down to six. And Hunted Horror, which is just a 7-7 Trample. At least now we will know how to sideboard against our opponent's deck. So let's see, we can sacrifice a Puzzle Knot, go up to 9, and then we're still very much dead. Alright, let's move on to game 3. But uh, now we can bring in our Ancient Grudges and our Explosives, which seems pretty important here in the matchup, just dealing with the Torpor Orb. And Ancient Grudge can also blow up the Eater of Days. Alright, so what do we take out? Suppose we can shave a Serum Visions and perhaps two Rogue Refiners in case our opponent does stick a Torpor Orb and we don't have a hate card for it. Something like this seems fine. Not sure about the Jace. Perhaps the Jace can go actually and we'll bring back in a Serum Visions and a Rogue Refiner. Just because if our opponent does go off with Torpor Orb then Jace looks pretty bad. Servant of the Conduit, now that we're on the play, comes down before our opponent could potentially run out a Torpor Orb. So Servant should be good to go. So we would like to be on the play. And this hand seems fine. We've got lots of lands, but uh, we do have Ancient Stirrings to maybe find an Emrakul to go with the Through the Breach. And instead, two lands and an Explosives. I guess we'll take the Explosives. And then we could preemptively play it on two, or we could just run out the Servant, which is, I guess, kind of annoying then that we have this Engineered Explosives that we want to play on two. A tapped Temple of Silence. So given that our opponent could potentially still have Hand Disruption, it's probably fine to play the Engineered Explosives preemptively here. Yeah, I think I'm fine just running out the Explosives here. Make sure to tap for blue and green. Say go. So this kind of forces our opponent to play the Torpor Orb and a creature that benefits from it in the same turn. Or if they have multiple Torpor Orbs, I guess. This just buys us a little bit of time. And yep, there's a Torpor Orb, so they could have multiples, which is a reason for them to run it out regardless. Alright, so we picked up another Servant, so I guess the play is just to Ancient Stirrings and then blow up the Explosives. And we found another Explosives, which I guess we take here in case they have a second Torpor Orb. And we already have four energy with our two Servants, so yeah. Let's activate right now and say go. So we're basically looking for an Amrakul here. Let's see if they have a second Torpor Orb or if they just start casting their creatures. All right, there's a Plague Belcher. This time it's just a 3-2, so a little more manageable. And yep, there's the Amrakul, perfect. So we can just run out two Servants guess we'll get red mana in case they both die somehow. And then next turn we can through the breach our opponent. Four mana, Plague Belcher gets in there, we're not gonna block so we fall to 14. And we'll find out if our opponent has an answer to our servants here. Or perhaps a hand disruption spell. And just a second plague belcher from the opponent. That's fine. And our opponent has exactly six permanents in play for our Amrakul. So that's gonna turn out quite nicely for us. I guess we're fine taking two damage since then we get to attack with our servants. We will take some damage from these plague belchers dying. But uh, I can live with that. Attack with everyone. Trigger Annihilator. And that's probably all she wrote. Our opponent falls to one, and then next turn we can kill them with the servants. And that's also the nice thing about having these random energy creatures, 
If your opponent survives through the breach with Amrakul, then uh, they fall to a pretty low life total and your energy creatures can just finish them off. So there we go. Two triggers from Plague Belcher. So we drop to 10. Opponent takes 19 down to 1. And next turn, our servants should be able to finish the job. Do need to shuffle our graveyard here. Opponent does have the swamp, so perhaps they can fatal push one of the servants, but die to the others. Let's go to attacks, and that should do it. So pretty cool deck from our opponent, but it does rely pretty heavily on just a single card, which is a, a pretty fragile strategy in general. So on to the next one. All right, we're on the play, and this hand seems quite good. We've got already four energy, so let's run out a breeding pool and a tune for a mountain. I guess we could also tune for a forest so that next turn we can double Ancient Stirrings, that's probably better. Blackleaf Cliffs into Faithless Looting, so it could be the Hollow One deck. And they discard Wooded Foothills and Lightning Bolt. And there's Emrakul, so a Through the Breach is also a plan now. Let's Stirrings. I guess we just get the basic Mountain here to preserve our life total. And Stirrings again. And there's a Puzzle Knot, which we definitely want over Emrakul number 2. So we've got all the energy we need here to spin the Marvel. Won't be able to do it on turn 4, but on turn 5 we're good to go. I guess if we draw an Aether Hub we can do it on turn 4. Bloodstained Mire. Opponent gets a Blood Crypt, cast Fatal Looting, discarding Collective Brutality and Lightning Bolts, and there's a Hollow One on turn 2. I think we just run out a Rogue Refiner here. It's a bit more mana efficient than running out the Puzzle Knot. On turn 4 we can run out the Marvel. There's a Gurmag Angler from the opponent. And a Burning Inquiry. Luckily we did not discard our Marvel. I guess I should have given this more thought since if we discarded the Puzzle Knot perhaps we wouldn't have had enough ways to get up to 6 energy. Well, if we had played the Puzzle Knot, we would be guaranteed to have 6 energy. And we actually also drew an Aether Hub, which, had we played the Puzzle Knot, would have given us 6 energy. I will just play out the Aether Hub here and run out the Aetherworks Marvel, now that we still have it in hand. So let's run out the Marvel. And we shouldn't beat that here, especially given that our opponent discarded all these Lightning Bolts. So we will take 9, then we can play the Puzzle Knots, get a little bit of a life buffer. I suppose if our opponent had cast a looting and discarded two phoenixes, we could have potentially died here, but... And our opponent did get a blood cast in their graveyard, which they can get back, but it doesn't have haste this turn, since we're still at 14. So we take 9, fall to 5, and now we have to spin it to win it. So let's start by running out the puzzle knots. And then we can also still run out the Virtuoso, but I'm gonna start by activating the Marvel. And yep, there's Emrakul. So let's cast that. Take an extra turn. Suppose we'll run out uh, Virtuoso here. And then take our extra turn. And move to combat. Annihilate our opponent. And then we even have the Thopter tokens on defense but they're also just that to the Emrakul attack, so... Alright, so pretty close one here against the Hollow One deck. So how do we want to sideboard? Definitely want our two copies of Relic of Progenitus. Uh, Ancient Grudge has its merits as it can blow up a Hollow One, but I think that's a little too narrow. Harness Lightning seems fine, as just getting rid of one of those big creatures can buy us a lot of time. Jace is also interesting since bouncing a Delph creature or a Hollow One can be nice, but at 4 mana it's a bit slow, so I don't think it's worth it. So our opponent will also be bringing in Ancient Grudges for the Marvel most likely, so I think we want to still keep the maximum amount of Through the Breaches, so not sure what we actually want to take out here. I could see taking out some number of Servants since they can pretty easily die to a Collective Brutality or a Lightning Bolt. And then we probably want to shave some number of Serum Visions since we don't want to take out any more energy cards. So this seems fine. Uh, this hand is not great, but the Ancient Stirrings could potentially find us an Emrakul, which combined with Through the Breach is pretty good. And two Aether Hubs plus a Tune is already four energy if we find a Marvel with the Ancient Stirrings. So I think I'm going to keep here. Just hope our opponent doesn't have a super fast start. 
opponent starts by cycling a street wraith and a stomping ground into faithless looting so we could see turn one hollow one opponent discards a phoenix and yep there's the hollow one so next turn they can get back the phoenix misty rainforest to draw i think we just ancient stirrings here and there's a relic of progenitus and an emrakul so the problem with taking emrakul is that we might just die before we get to five mana for through the breach but Relic also comes a bit too slow since our opponent can just get the Phoenix back in the next turn. So our best bet is probably just getting the Emrakul and then hoping to draw into some removal or life gain to keep us alive long enough. So we'll say go. And there's a Flameblade Adapt, which could also be pretty powerful combined with random discard effects. So our opponent likely gets the Phoenix back here. So that makes me feel better about taking the Emrakul rather than the Relic. So we will be taking 6 on turn 2, which is not bad. So unlikely that we get to 5 mana for through the breach here. And there's a Marvel giving us a glimmer of hope. I think we're supposed to play out the Aether Hubs to gain the most amount of energy possible. And we still have basics we can fetch, so that seems fine. So let's attune. Get another forest. Play Aether Hub, say go. I guess if we can draw a Rogue Refiner or Virtuoso, we can maybe buy a turn. Opponent can flashback the looting, but looks like they have a Delph threat instead. Gurmag Angler cleans up the graveyard. And a Goblin Lore as well. So Flameblade Adapt 6 power, so we're taking 12 on turn 3. Falling down to 2, and I don't think there's a draw that can save us here. So we'll go on to game three here, hope that our opponent has a less explosive start. Don't think we want our own explosives here. Yeah, maybe Ancient Grudge deserves a second look. It still feels like it's not where we want to be. Yeah, I think I still like our configuration. Maybe we want the Servants just to be as fast as possible. I could buy that argument. Maybe we just shave a Puzzle Knot and another Serum Visions and call it a day. Would like to be on the play. And this hand is just missing an Emrakul or a Marvel. Do have all the energy we need and the redraw with Rogue Refiner. So can easily lose to a quick start from the opponent, but I don't think we're supposed to mulligan this one. So let's go ahead and play the Misty. Fetch a Stomping Ground end of turn. And at least this time we have some creatures to block with. So we won't be as vulnerable to an early Hollow One. Turn one looting. I think on turn two we just run out to Servant. Opponent discards Bloodcasts. So let's get a Stomping Ground here. And all right, there's a Marvel. So we have everything we need as long as our opponent doesn't have Burning Inquiry to mess with our plan, we should be good to go. So we do have Ether Hub, but I think we're still supposed to run out the Sanctum first in case we draw another one. And then run out the Servant and say go. So next turn we can play Rogue Refiner. So opponent gets back Bloodcast, and no play, alright, that's good for us. Given that we don't have land number 4 at the ready, I think I like running out a Refiner here. And say go. Opponent could have Ancient Grudge, since they kind of had a pretty slow draw here. So that could be a reason to not run out the Marvel while we don't have 6 energy, since otherwise they can blow up the Marvel before we get to activate it. Bloodcast gets in for two. I think we'll just take it since there's larger amounts of life we can gain later. And there's an attune, so I guess that kind of solves our problem since we get to activate Marvel right away. So let's cast the attune, get an island, play the island, run out to Marvel, and then hope to find an Amrakul. And there it is. All right, easy game, easy life. Don't think our opponent comes back from this. So turn four, Amrakul wins the game and the match. So I want to thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this gameplay. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for supporting the channel. And you can do so yourself as well over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd, where you get cool rewards for supporting the channel, as well as getting us closer to our goals, where with every goal reached, we will release an additional weekly series. So if you want to see more content, Patreon is the place to go.